الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا Indeed all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our Lord the gracious, the merciful the master of the earths and the heavens the king of the day of judgment Azza wa Jal and the prayers and the blessings of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and be upon all those who follow on the footsteps of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Nashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah wa nashadu anna muhammadan abdullahi wa rasooluh wa safiyuhu min khalqihi wa khaliluh sallallahu alayhi wa sallam adda al-amana wa ballaga al-risala wa nasaha al-umma wa kashaf Allah ta'ala bihi al-ghumma sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ومن استنى بسنته وسار على هديه إلى يوم الدين. We bear witness that there is no Lord but the Almighty Allah سبحانه وتعالى and that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is the messenger of Allah. May Allah سبحانه وتعالى's peace and blessings be upon our beloved صلى الله عليه وسلم and be upon all those who follow in his footsteps. I remind you and remind myself to be pious, to remember Allah سبحانه وتعالى and everything that you do. To heed the orders of the Almighty Subhanahu wa Taala when He says, "Azza wa Jal, Ya yuha aladina amanu taqullaha haqqa tuqatih, wala tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Ya yuha aladina amanu taqullaha wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat li ghadin wa taqullah. In Allah khabirun bima taamalun. Oh, you believe, be God conscious, and die in no way except in the way of Islam. Oh, you believe, fear Allah Subhanahu wa Taala." And let every soul be aware of its own tomorrow. And fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for he knows best what you do. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our gathering. And to make our jum'ah a blessed jum'ah, insha'Allah. And to forgive us, and guide us, and keep us steadfast. And to instill taqwa in our hearts. Allahumma ameen. My dear respected brothers and sisters, I wanted to reflect with you today on some occasions that have taken place. By the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we had our fundraising dinner this past weekend, the annual event for Darul Hijra, to showcase the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us, to invite you to continue your commitment and to be a partner in this journey that we have been blessed to enjoy through this blessed place. This weekend, your brothers and sisters in the executive committee and the board are embarking on a rebranding event. They wanted to reflect upon the last 35 years. We have been a community in Dar al-Hijra for over 35 years by the grace and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah have blessed us with taqwa. Allah have blessed us with brotherhood. Allah have blessed us with the sacrifice and the challenges that have made us a better people. And insha'Allah, a closer people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have named Darul Hijra in the remembrance of the house and the, ho the home of the beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala described the masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Surah Al Tawbah, and He said, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is, La masjidun usisa ala taqwa min awwal yawm. A haqqu an taquma fi. فيه رجال يحبون أن يتطهروا والله يحب المطهرين أو المطهرين. When we named it Dar al Hijra, my dear brothers and sisters, it was to remind us of the first capital of Islam. The house of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was established in Medina, which was referred to when he was asked صلى الله عليه وسلم. Where are we going? The believers in Mecca were wondering. فَيَقُولُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أُرِيتُ دَارَ هِجْرَتِكُمْ أُرِيتُ سُبْخَةً دَاتِ نَخِلْ He was describing Al-Madinah. 
I have been shown the home of your migration. I have been shown a place with palm trees. And when he was directing his companion, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to go, he would tell them to go until you get to that city. حَتَّى تَقْدُمَ الْمَدِينَةِ فَإِنَّهَا دَارُ الْهِجْرَةِ Subhanallah. 35 years later, we are reflecting how from within that Medina of Darul Hijra, the light of Islam has spread to the rest of the world. From the hearts and souls of those who gathered in that beautiful city that have been blessed by the presence of the beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there comes the light of Islam. So that when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 10 years later, was giving his farewell speech. And people realized that the end of his life, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was coming to an end. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would reveal upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the days of tashriq in Hajjatul Wada'. Surah Al-Nasr, إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْهِ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابًا A reflection, my dear brothers and sisters, because we are thinking about the future of Dar al-Hijrah. And we want you to be part of that process. We want you to reflect upon who we are, where we are, and where do we want to be in the future, my dear brothers and sisters? And no single board or no single administration will be able to determine this. In the last dinner, we said we are moving from a house of migration to the quintessential Islamic community center of America. We love Dar al Hijra, we are Dar al Hijra. But Dar al-Hijra is complete when we embrace our mission and when we live up to our vision and when everybody who is a part of Dar al-Hijra subscribes to the future vision of Dar al-Hijra. You see, our beloved sallallahu alayhi wasallam used to say that Mecca is the most beloved piece of land on earth to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it was the most beloved to him sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And he would say, Wallahi, by Allah, if the people of it have not forced me to leave, I would not have left. But then when he got to Medina, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to pray constantly, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and used to say, Allahumma rzuqni hubba al-Madinati ka hubbi Makkata aw ashad. Oh Allah, grant me the love of Medina, the same way I love Mecca, the same way I love Palestine, the same way I love Libya, the same way I love Misr. The same way I love Pakistan. The same way I love India. Aw ashad. But the reason the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tied his love to Medina, the city upon which we call our masjid today, is because it was the home for him to implement the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To bring the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shine upon all of humanity. The companions of the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who heard his sermon in Mecca, in Hajjatul Wada' did not die in Mecca, nor did they even die in Medina because they knew that their mission was to spread the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the world. And so a hundred years later, the last Sahabi who was dated to die in, Mecca, in Medina was a gentleman or a, or a Sahabi by the name of Mahmoud ibn Rabi'ah. And he was... And it was in the year 99 of Al Hijrah, a century after his Hijrah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Islam was all over the world. There is not a part of the world at that point of the world they knew. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with them. They have not traveled and invited and invoked the deen of La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. There is nothing less we expect of Dar al-Hijrah than for Dar al-Hijrah to be everywhere outside of the confines of this 
building that we love and we cherish and we remember every block that was built in this blessed place. But the real mission, my dear brothers and sisters, is not within this masjid, inside of it. Here we meet, we love each other, we unite, we strengthen one another. We remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we glorify the Almighty Azza wa Jal. And then we go outside to translate that faith that imbibes every one of us. And that energy that we gain from seeing the beauty of the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if we were to fulfill the mission that Allah prescribed upon us, it is by going in droves outside of the boundaries or the boundaries of this place to enlighten the world around us with the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after the conquest of Mecca, he returned to Medina, my dear brothers and sisters. And when the Ansar were not sure why did the Prophet sallallahu not give them any of the booties, he told them all the people would go back with ashatu wal ba'ir wa ta'uduna bi rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because he knew that there is yet much to be done. And there is a lot to be done by those who live Islam, who stand by Islam, who understand that the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not just limited for those who have declared shahada, but rather it is a responsibility to deliver to everybody outside. And so my dear brothers and sisters, if we look and reflect upon these ideas, we're wondering, what is the next phase for Dar al-Hijrah? What do we want that Hijrah to be when we say the quintessential Islamic community center of America? We want Darul Hijrah to remain the light, but the one that enlightens all of America, my dear brothers and sisters. And this is not a, a dream, but rather it's a mission to be embraced and a vision to be achieved by those who believe. In the deen of La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah, we call our vision here in Darul Hijra to be a leader for the common good and a just, virtuous American society. We call ourselves a community founded in faith, growing in service. We challenge ourselves to create a mission where we engage, develop, and empower our Muslim community for the betterment of our society. How can we take that? How can we take the wonderful work we have in Dar al-Hijra, the outreach departments of civic engagement, interfaith work, government relations and public affairs, social services, absolutely wonderful if you look and see my dear brothers and sisters, this is the work of all of us, the youth work that we do, the educational work that's being done by our imams, and by the services and the lessons throughout the week, the taking care of the needs of our community, the counseling, the, the services, the weekend schools, the Ramadan programs, so on and so forth. We've been blessed, my dear brothers and sisters. But it's time to set our sights, to fulfill the very responsibilities that are deservant of the inheritors of the city of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa we need to challenge ourselves, my dear brothers and sisters, to understand that when we embrace those visions and those missions, we must prepare ourselves to play that role. We must have the willingness to change, and we must have the ability to transform. My dear brothers and sisters, the Muslim community in America is growing. The face of America is growing. The embracing of our community and our society is a must and a responsibility. And it is the fulfillment of our mission. And so don't shy away from it. Groom your children. Build them. Make them the best moral people they can be. But make them also the most capable of transforming the very being of our society. Because we can. The numbers, the magnitude of the capabilities within our community are tremendous. And it just takes us to understand that any society, my dear brothers and sisters, a human society that is in need of the divine guidance of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are tools by which you transform. There are tools by which you can bring about change. And we need to bring that change. We are a community, my dear brothers and sisters, in a very diverse society. 
and a society that has a setup that is secular by nature so that it can cater to all of the minorities that live in it. But it's a setup that allows us to relish and enjoy our freedom of religion to be able to develop in our deen, to be able to create the venues by which we can engage the rest of the society by creating a relevant discourse through the un deep understanding of our Quran and our Sunnah. So you don't get, leave that to somebody else to do. It is what you do every day when you engage the people outside, but it must be done on a very, the very foundations of our faith. And so we must come to a collective understanding of what that transformation is going to be. We're going to have reasons to develop the scholarship to understand all of the intricacies of our deen so that we can engage all the variables that we see in our society. But then once we know what are the constances of our deen, we must know that which changes as well and allows us to move and in impact and influence and engage and create areas of sharing and, and, and work with other communities as well. And so we must be able to do this change in a controlled fashion, in a fashion that allows us to bring about the positive change that we need. And it's the must that must happen within our communities. And so when we are ready to have our youth and our young ones take over and develop the next phase of the progress of Islam in America, we are assured that we have done our part and we are assured that we have given and invested all the efforts that we can. I'll give you some examples, my dear brothers and sisters. When you engage the, the young leaders of today, those who are wanting to see Islam spread and, and live in their lives, they're no longer interested in what's called the interpersonal change. You see, you and I were used to the interpersonal change. You and I want to make sure that people like us, want to make sure that people understand us, want to make sure people know about Islam. And we do so, and we must do so. But for them, when I engage my children today, when I engage the young leaders of tomorrow, they're not interested in just the interpersonal aspects of it. They're interested in the structural aspects of it, my dear brothers and sisters. They feel that there are too many ills that have been inculcated in our laws and in our policies. That in order for us to transform a society genuinely and effectively and long term, we must transform the very foundations of why these things happen. Why do we see social injustice? Why do we see racial inequality? Why do we see poverty? Why do we see the problems we have? And so if we don't embrace that kind of deepness and that kind of seriousness in engaging the very change we seek, then we will never be able to take hold of the very foundations of the change we want to see in our society. And, by the, and we are responsible, my dear brothers and sisters. We're no longer the ones that are just standing by. We're no longer the ones who are insular and, and just come to this country. And I embrace my brothers and sisters who have been here one year or those who have been here 30 years or those who have been born here. It's the same mission. It's the same vision. It's the same responsibility, my dear brothers and sisters. We no longer want to be isolated for the interconnectivity of all of communities in the face of discrimination and injustice is something that is a must for us to reach out and engage them and, and, and work with them. If we look at the issues at hand, it's not just about religion, it's not just about race, it's not about, just about gender and so on and so forth. The kids call it intersectionality. And they understand these dynamics and so we must prepare Dar al-Hijra and every one of us so that we can embrace the change that's coming. My dear brothers and sisters, in 2020, more than 50% of America will be you and me. Virginia in the year 2040 will be the 10th largest state in the country with over 11 million inhabitants. More than 50% of those who are under the age of 50 will be your children. It's happening. It is our nation. It is our country. And it is high time for us to present our Islam, our values and principles as the change that America needs and as the change that America must embrace in order for it to be the human experiment that we believe it should be. 
And so my dear brothers and sisters, Dar al-Hijra is preparing to play that role. Dar al-Hijra is going to stand on the belief of La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, on the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and in the traditions of our beloved deen. But we must learn it, and we must be able to apply it, and we must be able to develop it, so that we can make sure that we are in the forefront of that change, that we'll be embracing our nation and will be led by your children and my children and all of the children of our society. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable us to be strong, to strengthen our faith and strengthen our aqidah and strengthen our iman so that we don't falter and we don't back up and we don't fear and we don't backtrack but rather look forward and move forward and sacrifice everything that we have in order, insha'Allah, for the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to touch every soul and to touch every person in America. I say this and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgiveness. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوا إِنَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا ضيبا مباركا فيه Salatu wassalamu ala al-habib al-mustafa wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa lah. My dear brothers and sisters, this is an ongoing work that requires the interaction of every one of us. And nothing will allow us to succeed except for a deep understanding of our faith. A united community that is willing and strong to work together, to work out their differences, to work out their different viewpoints to come up with the best articulation of the faith that we believe in. And then a constant and a persistent engagement with strength, with yaqeen, with the ability to influence and change so that we can bring forth, inshallah, the transformation, not just for our sake, but for the sake of all of humanity and for the sake of all of our society. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enlighten our hearts, keep us steadfast, make us part of this movement, of this change, to move out our hijrah, from a house of migration, a beloved house of migration, a beloved Dar al-Hijra, to the quintessential Islamic center, Islamic community center of America, where the light of Islam will shine across our society and across our community and make every one of us to be the Sahaba of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to be those who are inspired by the beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Lord the Almighty Azza wa Jal to be able to withstand the challenge that comes with change and comes with influencing others. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us and forgive us. Allahumma afu anna wa gfir lana wa rahamna. Anta mawlana fansurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin. Allahumma ahdina wa ahdi bina. Allahumma ati nufusana taqwaha. Wa zakkiha mawlaya anta khayru man zakkaha. Anta waliyuha wa mawlaha. Ibad Allah. Inna Allah ya'muru bil'adli wal-ihsani wa ita'idu al-qurba. Wa yanha anil fahshai wal-munkari wal-baghi. Ya'idukum la'allakum tadakkaroon. Fadkuru Allah yadkurkum. ادعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وقوموا إلى الصلاة يرحمكم الله وأقم الصلاة